Welcome to the Dennis Report. I'm Dennis Acheson, and here's an episode of As I See It, titled Francophone versus Francophone, only in New Brunswick. First, though, if you like the work we do, please go to thedennisreport.ca, scroll down to the PayPal or Patreon links, and help support the show so we can expand the work we're doing for you. So back to today's commentary. Do you remember when Kevin Arsenal said this in the legislature? People's Alliance, the leader of the People's Alliance has been throwing around that New Brunswicker needs common sense. Words that we see written, written in this throne speech. Joseph Goebbels, yeah, I'm quoting Joseph Goebbels, Reich Minister of Propaganda of Nazi Germany said, it would not be impossible to prove with sufficient repetition in a psychological understanding of the, po the people concerned that a square is in fact a circle. They are mere words, and words can be modeled until they cloth ideals and disguise. What exactly does common sense mean? The people are in New Brunswick, you be Francophone, Anglophone, First Nation, or newcomer, deserve a straight and honest answer. And do you remember how the media the next day, or the next time the legislature gathered, covered this this way? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to uh, call a point of order. Uh, Friday's session uh, had the uh, member for Kent North, uh, in his response to the throne speech, um, frankly makes some ins insinuations and um, uh, some comparisons, frankly, uh, inappropriate uh, to uh, Nazism. Uh, and I think for the dignity of this House and for the member's own dignity, I would ask him to withdraw those statements uh, so we can move forward. And, uh, you know, I understand heated debate, I understand emotional debate, uh, but it's in uh, my opinion and the opinion of our caucus that he certainly overstepped. And uh, I'd like to call a point of order for him to withdraw those statements. And here's Mr. Arsenault's response. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, I refuse to take back these words. It wasn't a comparison. It wasn't a comparison. Okay. But consider this. The media never showed you the rest of that legislature session where a People's Alliance member stood up and she spoke with much passion about also being a Francophone and how those words from the Green Party made her feel. Here's some key clips from that speech. Raising two boys in today's society has always been our goal to raise two young men with morals, the same morals that we were raised with. We have taught our boys to respect the thoughts and feelings of others. We have taught them to build people up, not tear them down. We have taught them compassion, honesty, integrity, a helping hand, and above all else, kindness. And it is the importance, and the importance in using your words. They may be just words, but I remember something, someone telling me years ago, you may not always remember what somebody says, but you will always remember how they made you feel. In the past few weeks, we have heard a lot of talk about perception, how perception can be attained with facts, with fiction. It can be changed by misconceptions and lies, and it can cause fear, instability, selfishness, anger, resentment, and division. All of these things, although make great headlines, only, use, only serve to diminish us in the eyes of others. When my grandparents moved to Chatham from St. Louis de Kent, they didn't speak English, and French wasn't spoken in our town. This set my uncles and aunts back in school, and of course bullied for not being able to speak English. My uncle and dad, being the two youngest, were born in Chatham, and although they spoke French to him in, at home, they answered in English, and did not feel comfortable speaking French as it was not accepted. So I get discouraged when I'm misrepresented by the lies that I would be against my family, against my culture, when my whole family supports me and my party and our message. Did you catch that? So how is it in New Brunswick that Francophone can fight with Francophone over French language rights in our provincial legislature? The electronic media especially do not cover it so you, the audience, get the full story and how can we ever make things better when within a language and within Francophone culture there is disagreement, animosity, and even hostility? Please consider what's coming in the next 20 to 50 years for New Brunswick. 
Massive changes in food security and food supply as California and parts of Texas and other parts of the food chain in North America go through huge shifts due to climate change. Meanwhile, in New Brunswick, we have declining family farms, declining access to our own food and our ability to feed ourselves. Also consider the huge shift in migration that's about to come, as more and more people look for better climates to live in. That's in the next 20 to 50 years. Meanwhile, today in New Brunswick, we have a Francophone angry at another Francophone over a misconstrued understanding of their responsibilities in the legislature to take care of all of us. We cannot get at those bigger issues that are looming just on the horizon until we settle this disagreement and this dysfunction within our provincial narrative. And at the same time, as we do that healing work, we also have to get at taking care of our relationship with First Nations. Because if anyone had a complaint about how they've been treated by government, it's First Nations. Until we get that healing done, we will continue to stumble and be unprepared for what's to come. So in New Brunswick, can we get over the hump and actually do a politics of kindness, just as Ms. Conroy says? We'll put the full clip at the end for those that want to see the full speech, just in case you think I doctored it. Be good, have fun, love each other. There are still a few people, although getting fewer all the time, that can't or won't understand where we stand on bilingualism, and we have been asked or told to make our message very clear. So I will quote a great leader and former Premier, Louis Robichaud, with a passage bill in 1969 that gave two New Brunswick official languages saying this, the aim of this bill is the extension of rights for all of New Brunswickers. It is in no way diminishes rights now enjoyed by New Brunswickers. On an individual basis, it is the right of New Brunswickers to be and remain unilingual or to speak two or more languages. The objective is to ensure that no unilingual New Brunswicker finds himself at a disadvantage in participating in public life of the province. With respect to the civil service, while other qualifications being equal, I think this is a fair bill, and if all is treated fairly, implemented fairly, and harmoniously, I believe it will lead to a much better understanding." End quote. This is more than totally reasonable and a very common sense approach to his equality equal opportunity program he created and I can't help but notice how very familiar it sounds today and what we've been hearing the last few months from our party leader. And our leader has made this message very clear, yes, very clear, and we have continued to say this every single day. And yes, there still seems to be some hostility, anger, threats, hatred, but it certainly isn't coming from the Alliance Party. We have vowed to work shoulder to shoulder with our Francophones and Acadian people. We have vowed to work shoulder to shoulder with our Anglophone, Anglophone people so that bilingualism can be imp implemented fairly for all of New Brunswickers. And you can find this in every quote, in every response, in every interview. Our message says just that. Because I've worked for the government for eight years with additional almost 20 years experience and I can tell you from personal experience that we have swayed from Mr. Robichaud's goal, I can tell you we are getting there. And I cannot stress enough how the importance of unity and good communication is to achieve these goals. <clears throat> Although I do, some, some, do sometimes find it discouraging when people speak out of hatred that choose to instill needless fear onto others. I am also thankful that it is just a very small few that choose to let anger lead them and there are so, so many more that choose the high road, that choose compassion and kindness towards each other and we see it in this house. And it is this reason that I believe we will be able to overcome these challenges for not only our sakes but the sakes of our children. I want my boys to know where they came from, what our family has endured so they can understand and appreciate and accept all cultures and races. Climate change is most certainly on the rise and very real. The members of Frightened Self have spoken of a 12-year window for something that needs to be done and I believe this to be true. We are at a pitiful, pivotal time in our lives to make changes to ensure we improve the vast footprint we have left on this planet and not to leave our mistakes and pass, down, pass them on to our children and our grandchildren and those children behind them. 
extreme and drastic weather that seems to be coming our new normal, our decrease in water, our natural water, and increase in sea levels. It is very clear that we must act quickly and diligently to do our part towards our planet. We must work closely with our First Nation communities. We must keep the communication lines open and protect the rights of our Aboriginal people. The first and immediate course of action to help our province's environment is banning glyphosates. We are pleased the government has said it will provide an alternative to the federal carbon tax by building a province's coastal and green econo economies and finding other ways to meet emission targets. This is something we wish to explore further and we would be willing to work in collaboration with the government to achieve. We support the appointment of a new legislative watchdog for science and climate change. If we truly want to do something to affect climate change, we must create a plan to reach zero emissions in an achievable, in an, in an achievable time frame. We must be good stewards of the province's natural resources. This can be re achieved by reducing the size and percentage of clear cutting to balance economy, the economic viability and environmental concerns. We believe that there must be a ban on glyphosate spraying on crown lands. Shale gas and hydraulic fracking is a very controversial topic right now and it is quite unsure how sh we should move ahead with this. It will no doubt it, it is no doubt that it will bring much needed revenues and jobs to our province and could dramatically improve our financial situation very easily. But we must be so careful and look at the environmental issues so we have a perfect understanding of all the consequences, if any, that this will have on our planet. We can't afford to use up our natural resources or harming our already unstable ecosystem. I personally appreciate all of these points and our stance from the beginning is that well, we will be the voice of our people. And I have ha talked to people and there have been many reaching out to me on the subject. So we will work hard, we will tour these sites, meet with all sides of the party, plus meet with the people of the communities and learn all we can about these processes, along with the studies that need to be done towards shale gas and the fracking process. So we can make a safe and responsible decision and to educate our people and our province. As well, we should be looking for new and innovative ways to power our province with new technology that does not use up all our natural resources. In tax carbon, n'a rien à voir au changement. Carbon pricing has nothing to do with climate change. It's a bureaucratic tax, and the only thing it does is take more money from taxpayers' pockets. Hard time to make ends meet partly because we are faced with the highest taxation in all of the country. If we truly want to do something to affect climate change, we must create a plan to reach zero emissions. But I want to say that I am impressed with the work that we've been doing already and have been accomplishing in such a short time. I'm happy for the paramedics and their families. Their hard work and dedication should not go unnoticed. Their years of training and education should not be wasted and we can't afford to lose any more medics to other provinces. Although we have only made the first and small step to putting more medics in the trucks and more trucks on the road, we will continue to fight for them. And I know this is just the beginning. During our time in this unique opportunity of minor government, of a minority government, we will continue to fight to keep our hospitals, to improve our health care and, de and decrease wait times. We will continue to fight for our teachers, to fight for our nurses, LPNs, nurse practitioners, and help to ensure all New Brunswickers have access to the best care. The shortage, we the shortage we currently face with our nurses can be dealt with and must be dealt with urgently. With our declining population in New Brunswick, we have to look at incentives to bring new nurses and health care workers into our province with incentives for their families and are able to find work as well. I look forward to working hard with the other members of all the parties to see positive changes with all of these issues and more. I want to thank the members of the legislature. I'm so proud to call you my colleagues. And again, I'm proud to be amongst the chosen to sit and represent our ridings. In this new and exciting minority government, we are blessed enough in my community that we have not one, but three representatives from three different parties with different ideas, different views, but all with the same agenda. That we have all sworn to work together and to work hard to do everything in our power so that our beautiful Miramichi River and our gorgeous province can shine and prosper. So let's just put the hate, anger, lies aside and move on to a more important issues and let's just get to work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.